background. As I mentioned before, threads are some unit of execution, meaning that we can execute our tasks in different threads. Multiple threads can come together in something called a process, meaning that a process can have one or multiple threads. Later on, these processes will be managed by your device's central processing unit or also known as CPU. By default, when we run an Android application, there has been some thread dedicated to that application. Also, we know that as the main thread. Or some might call it the UI thread. But it's important to know that these two are different. Main thread and UI thread in some cases can be different from each other. But that is uh, very advanced and not suitable for our discussion in here. But why do we need to do our tasks in the background and why don't we do everything in that main thread? Well, there are a few reasons for that. For example, when we try to download some file from internet or when we are trying to connect to our database. Or for example, when we try to encode or decode some bitmap. These kind of tasks are time consuming, meaning that if we try to run them on our main thread, in the best scenario, they can block the user and uh, slow our application. And uh, in worst case scenario, they can cause crashes or something called an ANR dialog or application not responding dialog. Means that Android system will notice that our application has blocked the user and will try to stop our application. Right now, uh, the amount of time that our application is allowed to block the user is something about five seconds and if the user has been blocked more than that we will get some ANR. There are many ways to handle different tasks in the background. In this session we are going to work with the most commonly used ways. For example we will work with async task in this video and also in future videos we will work with uh, services bound and unbound services, job scheduler, and after that, we will work with Working Manager, which has been released, I believe, uh, one or two months ago in some stable channel. And uh, later on, in future sessions, we will work with Firebase Job Dispatcher as well. Okay, let's begin. I'm trying to create an application that will uh, count down from some number, for example from 10 to 0. Also I created this spinner in here in order to check if we are blocking the user from the main thread. Up until now we have passed the spinner items uh, in our Java code dynamically, but there is another option to pass items to a spinner. For that I can create uh, and string array in my strings values. In here, I can create an element called string array. I can name it, for example, countries. I can create different items for my spinner in here. Later on, in my layout file, in my spinner item, I have an attribute called entries and I can pass the countries array which will set the uh, items in that spinner manually in here or statically to be precise. Let's uh, initialize these items in my Java code.
Right now, all of these are happening in the main thread. Uh, this onCreate method will be called in the UI thread. And if I try to uh, update its value in the main thread, for example, let's uh, create a loop in here for int i is equal 10, for example, i less than 0, and i negative negative. I don't think we have seen this i negative negative. It will uh, count down from this i, for example, 10, 9. And uh, we'll update the text number in here. Let's set text to string dot value of i. I'm going to update the text of this text view every second. For that, I'm going to slip the thread in here for one second or 1000 milliseconds. But of course, uh, because I want to use this slip, I need to uh, surround it with some try catch and catch interrupted exception. Let's try it and see if it's working or not. Sorry, I need to change this one to greater than zero because in the other way, the sentence will always be false. As you can see in here, our UI thread has been blocked and that's because this onCreate method is happening be uh, before the onStart method. And uh, it will block the UI thread until this for loop has been finished. And after it's finished, our i is equal to 1, our last i integer, and the text of our text view has been set to 1. We definitely don't want this in our application and also we don't want the potential crashes that could happen in our application. For that, we should do time-consuming tasks in the background. The first option, as I said, is uh, async task. We can create an async task uh, like any other Java class. In here, we need to extend from async task. Inside this diamond, I need three inputs. The first is the thing, the kind of object that async task will receive. For example, I'm going to pass integers. The second item is going to be the progress of our async task. We can pass void in here, or for example, if we want to update uh, our UI, we can pass integers. I'm going to pass void. And the third one is the kind of object that is the result of our async task. For example, I can pass a string in here. When you extend some class to this async task, uh, you need to implement at least one method called doing background. This doing background method will be executed in another thread or also known as a worker thread. For example, in here I can uh, log these integers that are being passed to this method. Let's add some logging up in here. And in here, let's add that number. integers dot integers with an index of zero which is the first and the only integer that has been passed to uh, this async task later on in our main activity we will call this class let's comment this code in here for example i can say update async task i can define it like any other java class we don't need to call the methods in this uh, class manually. We can simply say our class dot execute. And because we can pass numbers in here, for example, five in this case. Let's run our application. In our log cat, we should see that number by searching for number. We can get the number five that has been uh, executed in the background thread or in a worker thread. But if you want to update the UI or UI elements in the main activity, we can uh, create the async task in here as an inner class. For that, I can say, for example, private class inner async task. Once again, for parameters, I can pass integer. For the progress, 
parameters, let's say integer, and as a result, I'm going to say a string. We will see how we can deal with these different objects. As before, I need to implement the doing background method, but there are uh, more methods that I can implement in this async task. For example, by pressing Ctrl O, I can see that there are a few options on pre-execute, on progress update, on cancel, and also on post-execute. Let's uh, override a few of them. On pre-execute, it will uh, be executed before this doing background. The other one on progress, and after that on post-execute. As you can see in here, in, in this on progress, I'm getting the integers, which is this data type that I passed. And also in this on post execute, I'm getting some string as the entry, which is uh, this data type in here. Among all of these methods, only the doing background method will be executed in a worker thread. The others will be executed in the UI thread. Generally, it's a bad idea to update your UI elements in another thread because the life of uh, that worker thread can be longer than the life of the UI element that you are updating. For example, our activity can be destroyed, uh, but we are trying to update the activity elements from this another thread. And of course, we will get some null pointer exception or crashes maybe. For that reason, we should avoid uh, updating our UI elements in this green background method. In this on pre-execute, I can initialize my different UI elements. For example, instead of uh, doing this in here, I can do it in that on pre-execute. Or any other initializing that you need to do. In here, in this green background method, I can create my for loop int i is equal to 10 and because this doing background method will be executed in a worker thread by trying to sleep this thread we won't block the ui thread let's say 1000 and of course we need to surround it with the try catch block but if I want to publish the progress of this worker thread, the work that this thread is doing, I have an option in here called publish progress. I can pass i, for example, in here. This i will be passed to this on progress update as the entry. And because this one runs on UI thread, I can update my UI elements from here txt number dot set text to the values that has been passed to this method and uh, with an index of zero because we are going to access the first element of these values and uh, specifically the only integer that has been passed as entry. Later on on this on post execute this one also runs on UI thread I can create a toast for example in here. But where does this uh, S is coming from? Well, uh, from here. Instead of returning null, we can return, for example, finished. In my main activity, I need to call and execute this uh, async task as well. Let's comment this. Inner async task. Inner async task dot execute. And let's say, for example. In here also, instead of defining this 10 manually, I can say integers with an index of 0. Let's run our application. As you can see, we are getting some crashes, and I think I know the reason why. Uh, once again, because this is an integer, I, and I need to cast it to some string. For that, I can say string.value all values with an index of zero. Let's run it once again. As you can see, our text view is being updated every second. And if I try to 
work with the UI thread, it's not blocked this way. As a result, I'm receiving finished. Async task is one option when you are working with background tasks and probably the easiest one. Uh, you just call it, call the class and execute it with uh, the values that you pass to it and it will handle everything else. For example, it will uh, cancel your thread when, whenever they are done, it will publish the progress. It will handle everything for you, but the thing that you need to be careful about when you are using async task is this error up in here. It says that leaks might occur. And of course, leaks means memory leaks. But what are memory leaks and how we can handle this situation? Well, whenever you try to create some instance of some object, for example, a class or even primitive data types like integers and boolean, uh, some space, some location in your device's memory RAM will be allocated to that object or primitive data type. And whenever you are done using that object or primitive data type, its location will be recycled. And uh, by recycle, I mean something called garbage collector will collect and free up the space that that object or primitive data type has been occupied in your memory RAM. But if for some reason that garbage collector cannot free up the space that object has been occupied in your device's RAM, those space will be occupied and uh, basically your application's usage, memory usage will be increased. Of course, for one or two objects like two simple classes, that space won't be much. But during the time, whenever the user tries to run your application, that space will increase and uh, your devices or your applications uh, memory usage will increase and uh, in some cases my Android system might uh, warn the user that application is occupying too much memory. But why we are getting this error in here? Well, we are creating and calling this uh, class from our main activity. This class will uh, create another thread a worker thread and uh, will do the job in that thread. The Android system doesn't know when the work of this doing background method is done and when it's going to finish. For example, if you are working uh, with this main activity while this uh, async task is uh, running, while that thread is running, for example, if you press the back button or you somehow destroy the activity that is running, this other thread and this class won't be destroyed, meaning that it will occupy that space in the user's device's RAM. And not just uh, by pressing back button, for example, if during the job of this uh, async task, the user tries to uh, rotate the device, for example, two or three times. Every time that the user rotate the device, the configuration will change and the activity will be destroyed and recreated. And every time that it creates the activity, it will create an instance of this async task. And uh, for those times, it will uh, occupy some space in user's device's RAM. But how can we avoid this uh, problem with using async task? And there are a few ways. The first one is uh, to make this class static but when you make it static, you won't be able to address your UI elements. From here, as you can see, I'm getting some errors. The other option is to create some callback, for example, and later on in your main activity, depending on the result of that callback, update your UI, but that will uh, make everything much more complicated. The other way and the simplest way, I think, is to override the undestroy method and cancel your async task in that on destroy method. Let's make this one a general object. Let's move it into fields. In my on destroy method after the super dot on destroy, I'm going to check if that object is null or not. If it's not null, I'm going to say inner async task dot cancel and pass through in order to cancel. If the async task is running, then our activity is being destroyed, 
before the string, it will uh, cancel the job of that async task. Of course, this is not immediately happening, but it will free off the space that this async task has been occupied in the memory. Working with async task is really simple and easy. You just need to pass three parameters in here, one as the input, another for the progress, and the other one for the result. The only method that you need to implement is this do in background. The others are optional and you don't have to override them, but of course those are useful. And really there is not much more to async task. So I'm going to stop the video in here. In the next video, I'm going to start talking about services. Basically, services alongside activities are another main component of every Android application. So, see you in the next video. Another option for doing tasks in the background beside async task class is using services. Services are another main component of every Android application and those are a context by themselves like activities. The main benefit of using services is that you don't need a UI in order to do your tasks in the background. In order to create a service, I can create a Java class. And I need to extend from basic service class. In general, services are two types, started services and bound services. The difference between these two is that the bound service is bound to another component like an activity or maybe sometimes a fragment. We are going to talk about bound services in the next video, but in this video we are going to focus on started services. It's important to know that services by themselves are executed in the main thread and not in a worker thread. Instead of extending from this base service class, I have another option in here called intent service. I can extend from intent service and uh, this time the intent service, it will create another worker thread and will execute the job in that thread. But uh, of course I am getting some warning in here because I need to implement some methods. Let's implement all that is necessary. Also, I need to create a construct. I don't need this string name in here. Instead, I'm going to pass it manually in here. It, uh, it will be basically the name of the thread that you are creating. Let's say download thread. Also, I need to change this one to null, though I'm not using Android X. Later on, we will see that when I start a service, for example, for a main activity, another method will be called in here, which is called on start command. This method will create a queue, means that if we call our service from different parts of our application, this on start command method will create a queue and uh, will handle those different intents one at a time and not simultaneously and at the same time. Later on, it will pass the intents to this onHandle intent method and uh, it will uh, deal with the task that is being passed to this uh, service class. Let's change this one to nullable as well. Because started services are not attached to any UI, they can have their own lifecycle. For example, in here I have an onCreate, which I can initialize this service. I have an undestroy in here. Later on, we will see that if we create a bound service, we will have an unbind method and also an unbind method. Let's delete all of these for now. Also, I don't need this onStart command method in here as well. And let's add a logging up in here. In here, I'm going to uh, get the intent or the extra values that has been put inside this intent. But of course, I need to check for null values as well because my service can be destroyed at any time.
because right now we don't know anything about downloading a file or any other long running task I'm going to mimic a long running task for that I'm going to pass a number via the intent that has been passed to this service and uh, create a for loop in here and I will just log a message in here every second this way I am just falsifying some download process and uh, log some message every second Nothing special is happening in here. Like activities that needed to be declared in the manifest services uh, need to be declared in the manifest as well. For that, I can press Alt Enter in here and add my service to manifest via the help of IntelliJ or in my manifest, I can uh, add it manually. Inside the application tag, I can type service and pass the name of the service. That's all that it takes to declare a service in manifest, but uh, we can define another attribute in here called exported. If you uh, set it to true, it means that you are defining an implicit service, meaning that other applications can have access to this service and can run it, but if you make it false, it will be only accessible from your application. Users can always check what services are running in the background and for example what is draining the battery life or maybe the networking. For that it's good to add a description in here and uh, specify what you are doing with your service. But you can't pass the value in here manually for example. I can't type anything in here. I need to declare it in my strings values and pass it in here. Let's add another value in here. Later on in my manifest file I will address that resource that I just created. It will set the description of this service to the value that I created. That's all it takes to create a started service. Then I need to, for example, call it from my main activity. In order to call the service, you need to create an intent. But instead of defining another activity, this time I'm passing the service. Let's pass the number as well. If you wanted to start an activity, for example, from here, you could call the start activity and pass your intent. But in order to start a service, you can say start service and pass your intent. As simple as that. Let's run it and if, see if it's working or not. As you can see in here in this locket, you can see that the downloading is happening in my service. This was one way of uh, defining or creating a start service, but there is a limitation for this way of defining a new started service. For example, if you want to do multiple tasks at the same time, you can't do it right now because the onStart command will create a queue and pass the intents one at a time to this onHandle intent. If you want to do different tasks at the same time, you need to extend from base service class. Let's create one. This time, when I implement the method, the first one is this unbind, which we are going to return now because it's not a bound service, it's a started service. The other method that I need to override is the onStart command. 
But as I mentioned before, this method will execute in the UI thread and if you want to do it in some worker thread, you need to do it yourself. For example, let's get the intent, the value that has been passed to this intent. I have different options in here. For example, I can create a thread as I created one in the Java session. Of course, I need to pass it a new runnable. In this run method, I can do my for loop. But of course I need to start my thread down in here. Thread.start. I need to declare this service in the manifest as well. Let's copy all of these. And we need to call it from our main activity. Sorry, I need to slip the thread in here as well inside this for loop after logging that message I can sleep my thread let's run it and see if it's working or not in here inside the log cap once again our download is happening but if I run it multiple times for example let's copy this line of code one more time, I should see it working at the same time. As you can see in here, the two operation is being uh, executed at the same time. But this way of creating a new thread is risky sometimes because you need to handle different situations of that thread. For example, canceling it or maybe destroying it. You have other options, for example, you can create an async task in here. Let's create one quickly. I can create my for loop in here. Also, I can publish the progress, but uh, because in that on progress method, I don't have access to these uh, integers, I need to create a member variable in here, a field. Later on in that on progress, I will use that. But of course, I need to create an instance of this async task and execute it. Up in here, inside this on start command. I can pass the number, incoming number. Sorry, once again, I need to slip the thread in here. But of course, as you know from before, async task makes things uh, one at a time, meaning that this time 
uh, those operations can't be uh, happening at the same time. It will be happened one after another. This on the start command method is returning some integer. And uh, if you take a look at the integers that available options, you have some flags. For example, this start sticky or start redeliver intent or start non sticky. The difference between these flags is that, uh, for example, when the Android system runs out of the memory, it, it might destroy your service. And whenever it finds those resources needed to start your service once again, it will use these uh, flags. In general, this start sticky flag will give the Android system some information about uh, whenever it's going to run again, meaning that if Android system will use the intent, or to be precise, the pending intent that has been passed to this service once again when it's going to recreate the service. Don't worry about the pending intent. We will see how is it working, uh, I think, in the notification session or might be sooner in the content provider session. For now, I'm just going to use this start sticky flag. Because started services has their own life cycle, you are responsible for the stopping of the service, meaning that whenever you are finished, with the job that you are doing in the service, you need to stop that service. For that, I can override the undestroy method of this service, and after the super.undestroy, I can use the stop cell. It will stop the service. But be careful with this stop cell method. For example, if you are calling the service multiple times, and if it will finish one task, after calling this understory, it will stop all of the running tasks that are happening right now. You can prevent that behavior by passing some integer into this stop cell. And the integer you will pass to this stop cell is uh, coming from here, from this on start command, this int start ID. You can save it, for example, in the fields. Let's, let's save it. Later on in your on the story inside this stop cell, you can pass the task ID. It will only finish the service that has been executed with this specific task ID. Also, as an alternative, you can stop the services from inside other components. For example, from the main activity, you can call stop service and pass the intent. This way, it will uh, stop the service from inside this main activity. It's important to know that from API level 26 or Android O to be specific, Android system has put some restrictions upon the using of background services. And uh, from API level 26 and higher, you only are able to start a background service if your application is visible to the user. For that, it's better used to always check the current build version. I can check the current build version by saying if build.version.sdk integer is equal or is less than build.versioncodes.o, for example, which stands for Android Oreo. If it is and if it's not, if it's not, we are going to start our service normally. But if it is Android O or Offer, you have an option in here, and that's the start foreground service. Sorry, I put the wrong condition in here. If it is uh, Android O or Greater, we want to we want this line of code, this logic happen, and if it's not, the other one. Program services will always be noticeable to the user, meaning that it will add some notification to the notification center at the user's device. I can pass an intent in here and later on in my service, for example, in here, inside the onCreate 
let's overwrite that as well. I need to start program. We can pass a notification in here, but because we don't know anything about notifications yet, I'm not going to do that yet. We will see how it will work in the notification session. Uh, basically, you will have a limited time after creating, after calling this uh, service, I believe it's five seconds. After five seconds, you need to start a foreground service. And if you don't, you will get some exceptions. Started services are very easy to use. Basically, you need to extend from service or intent service in case you don't want to handle different things at the same time. And with using intent service, you only need to overwrite on handle intent and it will take care of the rest like in here. But there are a few limitations. For example, you can't interact with the activity or the client to be specific that uh, called this started service. For that, we can use something called a bound service. Basically, a bound service will bound to the parent client that has started it and it can interact with it. And also, when you are using bound services, you don't need to be worried about the stopping of the service. It will stop itself when it finishes the job and also when it loses the parent client. For example, if we destroy the parent activity, our service will be destroyed as well. Okay, we are going to talk about band services in the next video. See you in the next video. At the end of the previous video, I said that we use bound services whenever we want to create an interaction between the activity or maybe the service or maybe the content provider or in general the client that starts the service and the service itself. And also whenever we want to limit the life of our services to the life cycle of the parent client. And here is how we can create a bound service. Like before, we can create a Java class. We need to extend from base service. We need to implement the unbind method. In here, I need to create an inner class and we will see why I'm creating this. It needs to be public. Let's call it local binder. Also, it needs to extend from binder class. The difference between this binder and this iBinder is that this iBinder is an interface and this binder class implements this interface. In here, we only need one public method which will return the current service. return sample service to this. This class will facilitate the connection between the service and the parent client. I need to create a member variable up in here of kind iBinder. Don't worry if you don't understand all of these, I will explain them all. And also this method in here needs to return the binder. With the help of these three elements in here, we will facilitate the communication between the service and the parent activity. Whenever we bind this service to the client, this unbind method will be triggered and uh, what it does is returning this binder variable from here. As you can see, I set this inner class as access state to public so that we can use it in other classes as well. Later on, we will use this inner class to initialize this binder item. This binder is an interface that will uh, make the communication between the service and the client possible. I also want to uh, pass a random number to the parent activity. For that, I can create another member variable in here of kind random. This random class will create uh, some random variable, nothing more. 
it's a basic Java class. Also, let's create a public method in here in order to return a random integer, for example. Random dot next int, for example, we can say it will generate some random number. In my main activity, in order to connect to this service, I need to create a service connection. For that, I can say private service connection. It's an interface. Service connection is equal to new service connection. Let's finish our sentence in here. As you can see, this interface has two callback methods, on service connected and on service disconnected. As the name applies, this method will be called whenever we are connected to the service and this one will be called whenever we are disconnected from the service. Let's create another member variable up in here. Boolean is bound, initialize it to false. Another one for our service, sample service, m service. As you can see, two items has been passed to this method, a component name and a binder. This component name contains the details about the service that we are trying to connect to, and the binder is the binder interface that helps us to connect to that service. I can use this uh, binder in order to facilitate the connection between these two. I can use the inner class that I created in that service. It was called local binder or sample service dot local binder. Let's call it binder is equal to we need to cast it to that class and we will pass our binder. Next we will initialize our service is equal to binder dot get binder. If you want to review the flow of things in here, we are getting some binder in here, which is basically this inner class. We are casting it to make sure that we are receiving this binder, and we are using this get binder method in order to access to our service of in the main activity. Then, with the help of that method, we are initializing our service. After that, we need to set is bound to true because we are now bound to our service. In this on service disconnected, we don't need to do anything special, just we need to set the is bound to false. Now we have this service connection interface. You can connect and disconnect to your service in different places. For example, you can uh, connect in onCreate and disconnect in onDestroy method, but that way your service will be running even if your application is not at the foreground. We don't want that in this case, but you can do it, of course. The other option is to do it in on start and on stop method. This way, your service will only be running whenever the user is working with your application. You can do it in the on resume and on pause methods, but uh, that doesn't seem to be logical because we don't want to lose the service connection for example, when the user receives some notification. If you remember, in those cases, the on pause will be triggered, and whenever the user comes back, the on resume will be triggered. Let's connect to our service in on start method. In here, I can define a new intent. From this to our sample service. If you remember, if we wanted to start a started service, we could call start service method, but in order to bind to the service, we can say bind service. We need to pass three things in here. The first one is the intent. The second one is the connection, which I just created, service connection. And the third one is a flag. In most cases, you probably would use this Point out a create flag. It will create the connection to the service only if it doesn't exist. 
you can check the Android documentation for other flags, but in most cases, this is the flag that you need. Right now, we are connected to our servers in our on stop. We need to disconnect from our service, but only if is bound is equal to true, or if we are bounded to that service. If we are bounded to that service, we can say unbind service. We need to pass the connection in here. Let's move these methods a little bit around to see which one will be called first. First of all, this uncreate will be called next the onstart, and whenever the user loses the focus to our application or moves our application to the background, this onstop will be called. In our onCreate, we can get the value, for example, that random number from the service. Let's pursue that in another method called display random. Let's create it down in here. I'm going to get the random number every second for that. I need to create a new thread, new runnable. In here, I need to check if we are bounded to the service, and also we need to check if our service is not null. If both of these conditions are true, then we will log some message. M service dot get random because that's a public method we can have access to. It. After that, we will sleep our thread. Thread dot sleep for one second. Let's add the service declaration into manifest and run our application and see if it's working or not. And we are getting some crashes, and uh, the reason is because I uh, initialized this binder to a binder general class. I need to cast it to this local binder inner class. This way, it can be cast to uh, the binder that we are receiving in here. Okay, let's run it once again. This time, I don't get any crashes, but uh, that doesn't seem to get us any random as well. And if we search in here for random, uh, we can't see any number. If we add a login here, I can prove that our connection has been made. Let's add a login in here. Let's run it once again. As you can see, unbind has been called. But the reason that we are not getting any random number is that we are calling this method in the onCreate. And uh, onCreate happens before the onStart and initializing our service connection. And uh, for the first time, our service is null and is bound is false. I need to create a for loop in here in order to check every second. For int i is equal to zero i less than, for example, 10 times, or 10 random number, i plus plus. Then I need to move all of this code into that folder. Sorry, I forgot to start the thread. Okay, let's run it one more time and see if it's working. As you can see here, our random numbers are being published. But I don't want to just log the random numbers. This time I want to uh, change the UI. Let's add a text view in our resources in our layout file. Let's delete all of these constraints and instead center our text view in the parent. Give it an ID. Of txt random. Initialize it in our main activity.
But if I try to update the text of this text view from here, from uh, this thread, I will get some exceptions. It will say that uh, you can't update the UI thread from another thread. Uh, for that, I can create an async task in here. Let's minimize all of these uh, extra methods. I can create an async task and uh, I will update my UI in that async task. doesn't need to receive anything, it just needs to publish uh, some number as the progress. It also don't need to have any specific uh, result. Implement it in background. In here I can create my for loop for int i is equal to zero, i less than let's say 10 times, and i plus plus. For each time I'm going to check if uh, we are connected to the service and also uh, if our service is null or not. If those conditions are true, I am going to publish zero as the progress because I'm just going to change the text of the text view to zero, not any special reason. But if those conditions are met, I'm going to publish the m service dot get random. Okay, let's uh, implement the on progress as well. In here, I'm going to change the text of the text view. That's a text to string that value of values with an index of zero. Next, I need to uh, create an instance of this update UI async task and uh, execute it. I can comment all of these threads because I'm not using it anymore. Update UI async task dot execute. I don't need to pass anything uh, as the entry. But if you remember, we need to be careful about memory leaks when we are uh, trying to work with async task. For that, I'm going to implement or override this on the story. Also, I need to change this one to a member variable in order to use it in two methods. Down in here, I can check if it's null or not. If it's not null, I'm going to cancel. Also, I forgot to slip the thread in here after um, publishing the result. For every time that we are looping, I'm going to slip the thread for one second. Let's run our application and see if it's working. As you can see, we are getting a random number every second. Perfect. We also can treat bind services like uh, started services. For that, instead of this bind service, I can just type start service. And uh, later on in my service class, I need to override the on start command because when we are using that start service, this method will be called instead of this on bind but I'm not going to do that in here. Okay, I think that's enough about services. In the next video, we will talk about Java Schedulers, which facilitates working with background tasks very much. Okay, see you in the next video. Java Scheduler is another option for doing your tasks in the background and it makes the life of Android developers a lot easier. It has been released since Android Lollipop or API level 21 to be precise and it will act upon the condition, not the time. We will see what I mean by the condition. Let's create a new project. You can uh, define the minimum API level to whatever you want but 
if you want to use job scheduler in your projects, your minimum API level should be 21 or alternatively, like in the previous video, you can check the build version of user's device at the runtime. And, but if you are choosing API level 21, 85% of the devices by this time are supporting uh, that API level. I'm going to change that to 19 and later on in my code, I will uh, check it at the runtime. We can create a job scheduler service by creating a new Java class and extending from job service. I need to implement two methods, on the start job and on the stop job. This on the start job will be executed when we call our Java scheduler from, for example, main activity, and uh, it will be executed in the main thread. So be careful about using job scheduler. If you are going to do some long running task in the background, you need to create a new thread or maybe an async task in here. As you can see, I'm getting some warning in here, and it says your minimum API level should be uh, 21. And right now, my minimum SDK is 19. And uh, if you want to check your minimum SDK version, you need to go to your Gradle file in module app. In here, you can see that. I can overcome this problem by adding something called an annotation by pressing Alt Enter and uh, add required annotation by adding this annotation this uh, java scheduler class will be executed will be called only if the user's device's api is android lollipop or higher i'm not going to do any long running operation in here instead as before i'm going to mimic that long running operation for that i will pass uh, this job scheduler a number and we'll use it to log some message every second. For that, I can receive the number that has been passed to this job scheduler by using a bundle and by the help of this job parameters that has been passed to this on start job method. I can say params dot get transient extra, which will pass a bundle as you can see in here. Or the better option is to use a persistable bundle. The difference between a persistable bundle and a normal bundle is that this persistable bundle is never null. Means that even if you don't pass any bundle, you will have some result in here. This persistable bundle will implement parcelable and clonable interfaces, and we don't need to implement the parcelable in order to pass the objects to this, uh, for example, job scheduler. Let's say bundle is equal to params dot get extras this time. Instead of creating a new thread in here, I'm going to create an async task down in here and uh, we'll pass this number to the async task and uh, we'll do the operation in its green background method. Let's overwrite the unpublish on progress as well. In here, I'm going to simply log a message. Let's add a log up in here. As before, I need to create an instance and execute this uh, async task.
As you can see in here, the result type of this method is a Boolean. And uh, basically, this Boolean will tell the Android system that if your job is finished or not. If you are doing your jobs in the main thread, so return false means that uh, you are finished with this job and don't want to continue on. But if you are creating a new task, a new thread, like I'm creating one in here, return true instead means that after finishing this method, the job won't be destroyed. This on a stop job method will happen if the Android system cancel or destroy your job before it's finished. It can happen in some conditions like if the Android system is low on memory and uh, your job's priority is not that high, it may cancel your job. The result type of this method is a boolean as well and if you return false, it will tell the Android system that your job doesn't need to be restarted again. But if you return true, whenever the Android system finds the enough memory, for example, it will reschedule your job. I can log a message in this case as well. Let's say job cancel. Like using started services, when you are doing your tasks in the background in a worker thread, you are responsible for the finishing or stopping your service. I can stop the service by using something called finish job, but I need to pass the parameters uh, to that finish job method. For that, I'm going to save these parameters in some member variable up in here. Job parameters. And in this on start job, I will save these params to the variable that I created above in here. Later on in my async task, in the on post execute method, I will finish my job because it's the method that will happen after this doing background and uh, means that whenever we are finished with our job. I can say job finished, I can pass my parameters and also a boolean indicating if I want to reschedule my job. With the help of job scheduler, you can reschedule your job, for example, for 15 minutes later or maybe every day. That's a flexibility that uh, brought us with the help of job scheduler. In here, I'm going to pass through because I do want to reschedule my job. That's everything you need to do in order to create a job scheduler. Only you need to add the manifest declaration as well. In your manifest file, inside the application tag, you need to add a service tag, the name of your service, but the other attribute that we need in here is a permission. I can say service bind. In order to use job scheduler, you need to add this permission to your service tag as well. Also, this on stop job method is a good place to clear your works. For example, in here we can uh, cancel the async task. If we are canceling our job, we do want to cancel or release the memory locations that had been dedicated to this async task. For that, I can say if my sample async task is not null, then sample async task dot cancel and pass through as we saw before. We are done with this job service. Let's call it in our main activity. I'm going to do everything in another method. First of all, I need to check if the user's device's build version is upper than uh, API level 21 or not. For that, I can say build.version.sdk integer if it's greater or equal to build.versioncode.lollipop, which is API level 21. If it is, first of all, I will create my persistable bundle. Also, I forgot to mention that this persistable bundle is only available 
from API level 21 and higher. If I don't put this condition in here, I can't use this persistable bundle as well. As before, I can say bundle that put integer number as the key and 10 as an example. The other thing that I need to do in order to start my job scheduler is a component name. We will see what this is. I need to pass this as the context and also my sample job service. This component name will only contain information about that job scheduler, that job service that we are going to start, nothing more. Next thing is a job info object which will contain the exact conditions that we are going to pass to our job scheduler. I can create one by saying jobs job info.builder, let's call it builder, is equal to new job info.builder. I need to pass an integer in here as the ID of my job. I can create a constant integer in here by saying PSFI and pressing tab, public static final int. Let's say download job ID. For example, let's say 001. I can pass it in here or alternatively I can pass uh, the number. The other thing is the component name to pass in here. With the help of this builder, I can set the exact conditions that I want to pass. And as you can see, there are a lot of them in here. The first one that I'm going to set is this set extra. I can pass my bundle in here. Next, you can define the network type. For example, if you are going to download some file, you can uh, do it only if the Wi-Fi is turned on or if the cellular is turned on, you can say that by set required network type and uh, you can pass the constant in here. For example, this network type any which will uh, start the job on any network condition or maybe this type cellular whenever uh, only the cellular available or this unmetered. Uh, you can use it whenever you are uh, turning on the Wi-Fi. This meter was available uh, for cellular in previous uh, versions of API. I believe in API level 28, it has been deprecated because cellular networks can be unmetered as well. I'm going to use a network any type for this simple job. The other one is set persistent. Uh, it needs a boolean in here and what it means is that it will uh, start the job even if the phone reboot or turn off and turn on once again. But in order to set this persistent, as you can see in the warning, you need to add a permission in your manifest. You can do it by pressing Alt Enter and add it and if we check at the manifest, we should see the permission added up in here. Receive boot completed. I can set other conditions in here as well. For example, I have an option in here that set periodic, which you can use if you want to start your job every, let's say 15 minutes or every half an hour. The minimum amount of time right now for this periodic is 15 minutes. You can't set the reschedule before that time. And it's really not that exact. And uh, as you can see in here, I have two constructors for this set periodic. The first one is for API level 24 and upper, which you can define an interval, for example, from 15 to 13 minutes. Whenever the Android system has free resources, it can dedicate the resources to your job and it can start the job. But if you are going to use the second one, you only need API level 21. I'm going to finish the builder in here. Instead, I'm going to check if the user's device's build version is greater than 24 or not. If it's greater than or equal to 24, which I believe is Android 10. If it is, let's say 
builder.setperiodic for from 30 minutes, 30 time. You need to pass it in uh, milliseconds times 60 times 1000 to one hour. Let's say 60 minutes time every minute 60 seconds and every second 1000 milliseconds. But if uh, it's lower than a level 24, else it's a periodic to every 30 minutes, let's say. There are many more conditions to this builder that you can check. For example, you can check if the user has connected the voice to the charger. You can check if the battery is low. You can check if the memory is low. For example, if you are compressing and saving some file. And if you want to check at all the conditions, you can check Android developers official website. Let's say job info builder Android. In here you can see different conditions and as you can see there are a lot of them. You can click on any one of them and uh, there is a description if you need one. There is only one more thing that I need to create in order to start my job and that's a job scheduler. Let's say job scheduler is equal to, we don't define it like new job scheduler instead. We can cast it to a job scheduler and use some method called get system service. It will uh, give you the system service with the uh, right flag that you will pass in here. For example, I can say job scheduler service as the flag. Next, I can say job scheduler dot schedule and pass builder dot build. As simple as that. Sorry, I made a little mistake. In the manifest, the permission should be point job service and not job service point. Point job service. If we run our application, we should see our job scheduler working. If I take a look at the log cap, I can see that the on progress update is logging some messages. Make sure to turn your Wi-Fi on or maybe uh, cellular data because uh, we passed network any type. Let's run it once again and uh, turn off the Wi-Fi this time. If I turn off, I can see that the job has been cancelled and uh, in here I am getting some interrupted exception which has been caught in here. This line of code has uh, caught some interrupted exception because we turned off the Wi-Fi and uh, now our job scheduler is not running anymore. But if I turn on Wi-Fi once again, our job should be uh, run again. And as you can see, it's happening very well. Even if I turn off the Wi-Fi and exit the application, let's close it. And uh, even if it's closed, if I turn on my Wi-Fi, I should see the job happening once again. And as you can see here, after a time that our Android system has uh, free up some resources, it will start our job once again. As you have noticed, Job Scheduler makes our life very much easier by defining these different conditions in here. But depending on your application and your users, it might be a bad point that it will only run in Android Lollipop and higher. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is Working Manager, which will uh, come around this exact problem, which I'm going to talk about it in the next video. See you in the next video. At the end of the previous video, I said that we are going to work with Work Manager in this video. Let's briefly create our project and start working. Make sure to check this use Android X artifacts because we are using Android X and uh, if you don't check it, you might get some weird errors. 
Sport Manager has been released in a stable channel in one or two months ago, and to be precise, March 20 of 2019. And its purpose is to overcome the problems that we have with previous ways of working background tasks. It will be compatible up to API level 14, so you don't need to be worried about compatibility. It's suitable for the tasks that are referable, and also it will guarantee that your task will be executed even if you restart your device. It's part of a collection of libraries called Android Jetpack, and it will act upon different conditions and also different timings. And if you want to add the work manager to your uh, project, you need to add the required dependency. Let's get the dependency from Android developers official website by Googling work manager dependency. The first link probably is our native link. And if you take a look at the URL up in here, you can see that we are navigating to some Jetpack in the URL. That indicates that it's a part of Jetpack library. As you can see, there has been a lot of alpha and beta versions released, but the first one that has been released in a stable channel is this version 1, which has been released in March 5th of 2019. It's uh, about two months ago. The version that I'm going to use is this 2.0.1 because it's the latest version that has been released in a stable channel. Up in here, I can see the required dependency. I only need this Java 1 and not the Kotlin or maybe Rx Java 2 and also I don't need this tester implementations. Just copy these two and paste it in your Gradle file. This one in here is defining a new value indicating the work version and later on it will pass it to this implementation. It might be useful in some cases, for example, if you have multiple libraries implemented, you can change the version once, but I'm just going to stay with it even though I'm using one library. Okay, after pasting, just click on sync now and it will be downloaded and added to your project. Like before, in order to create a work manager, you need to create a new Java class. It needs to extend from worker class. This one in here comes with Android X dot work, worker. You need to implement the do work method and also you need to create a constructor. This do work method will happen in the background thread and uh, you basically do everything that you need from this class in this method. For example, I can log something in here. Let's add a logging up in here. Later on, I will pass data to this class, but in here I'm going to receive that data. We can't pass data via using a bundle. Instead, we have another option called data. The first one, Android X dot work. There are a lot of data types in here. Make sure to import from the first one. Let's call it input data. Is equal to get input data. And for example, I can receive a number in here. Dot get int, a key, and a default value. Like before, I'm going to need some uh, long-running operation. For that, I'm going to create a for loop. Also, I will pass a name into this data later on in order to show which job is happening right now. Let's get that name. And let's log it.
the result type of this two work method is something called result dot success or result result dot failure or maybe other tags like result dot retry. You can uh, return anything that you want depending on the job that you are doing. Because we are at the end of this method and we are sure that our job has been successfully executed. That's all you need to do in this uh, sample worker manager class. Later on in your main activity, you can call it. First, let's create that data object that we later on we received in the sample worker manager class. Make sure to choose the right one, the one that comes from this ambergex.org. You can create your object by saying new data that's builder. Then you can pass your values. For example, for the number, in here I can say 10. And also, I have a string called name. After putting your values, you just need to call that field, and it will create your data file. You can define your work's different conditions by defining a new object called constraints. The first one that will come from ambergex.org. Like the data, I can say new constraints. Dot builder. In here, I can see different conditions. Set requires charging, which will uh, execute the job only if the device is in charging. Battery not low, the names are descriptive. The network type, for example, we can define one. Network type does not require one meter for Wi Fi connection and also a meter for cellular connection. Also, uh, we can pass this connected and no matter what the type of the network is. Let's pass one meter in here. Also, let's pass another condition. Set requires battery not low. We need to pass a boolean in here. Another one may be set requires charging and true in here as well. After that, we need to call the field once again. In order to create your work request, you have two options. One is this one-time work request, and the other one is periodic work request. The second one uh, will give you the ability to uh, reschedule your work depending on different situations, like different timing. I'm going to stay with one-time work request in here. New one-time request field in that builder. I need to pass my sample worker manager class in here. I need to set the input data to the data that I created above in here. Also set constraints to the constraints or the conditions that I defined up in here. Also, I have different options in here, for example, and this set initial delay will execute your task after the amount of time that you pass to this duration. For example, I can say one and the pass time units dot hours. It will uh, execute my job after one hour. But I'm not going to do that because we want to run our job immediately. Let's just call that field in order to create our work request. The last thing that you need to do in order to execute your work is to say work manager dot get instance. It's a single point class dot NQ. This NQ will uh, create a queue and will uh, run the tasks in the background thread one at a time. You need to pass your uh, work request in here. Let's try running our application. In the locket, I should see it working. As you can see, we are logging the name and also the number, which is giving me 10. And that's because 
I pass a number in here, but I need it to pass one. Let's try it once again. It has started a name we are receiving, and we are receiving a number at every second. Let's create a periodic work request as well. On my main activity, I can say periodic work request. Let's call it periodic work request. Let's call it a new periodic work request dot fielder. In here, I need to pass three things. The first one is my sample worker manager dot class. The second one is the time that I'm going to run the interval between the works. For example, let's say 15. And the third item is the time unit which I can say time minutes dot minutes up in here. After that, I need to pass the input data to the data, or we can create another data. Dot set constraint. This set constraint and set input data are not essential, and you don't have to pass anything in here. If you don't set the constraints for your request, Android system will execute your tasks whenever it finds the required resources. Let's say constraints in here. After that, build out the request. Once again, work manager that get instance dot thank you or periodic work request. And let's run it once again. As you can see, our work is being executed. After finishing, it will uh, reschedule my work for 15 minutes later. Although this number is not exact and you can't uh, depend on this 15 minutes because if Android system doesn't have the required resources or if it's, for example, those mode, uh, this task won't be executed. Another benefit of using Work Manager is that you can chain different works together. It means that if your works are dependent to each other, for example, if you are creating an, a photo editor application and uh, if you are applying some filters to your image and after that you are uploading the image, you only want to upload the image only when the filters has been applied. Let's comment all of these and create another one-time request. Let's say one-time request. Let's call it second work. One-time request of builder. Once again, I'm going to use this sample worker manager. You can create another one in here if you want. Let's set input data, new data.builder dot put int let's say five this time dot put string as the name let's say second word dot build the other one dot set constraints new constraints builder but let's just set the network type to network type dot not required. Let's do it. After everything, I'm going to build my second work. This time I can say work manager dot get instance dot begin with our first work, which is one time request. After that, I can say then our second work. I can chain as many work as I want in here by saying dot then. Also, you can pass a list of in here in this begin with. For example, if you are applying multiple image filters to your image, you can apply each filter in here. For example, after this one time request, if I have Another work, I can't pass that. For example, the third work. But I don't have one in here, so I'm not going to do that. After everything, don't forget to enqueue your work. Let's run our application. In the logcat, you can see that the first work is uh, executing. 
But as you can see in here, uh, this first work is uh, executing twice. I don't know uh, the reason, and uh, I'm guessing this latest version that I implemented in my project is uh, buggy yet. It shouldn't happen uh, because we are just calling it or enqueuing it once. I don't really know the reason, but I'm just guessing that uh, it's buggy. But besides that, after finishing the first work, the second work is uh, happening, which only has five numbers. With the help of work manager, you have a lot more options. For example, you can check for the state of the work that is happening. The state can be blocked, enqueued, or um, successfully finished. For getting different states of the work, you can say something like work manager dot get instance dot get work info by ID. You need to pass a listenable in here. This listenable future, which really is some weird in interface. Also, you can set different IDs uh, for your work, also different tags. But there is another option in here is get work info by ID live data, this one in here. This method will return a live data, as you can see in here, which we will be familiar with, I believe, in the database session. Working with live data is very easy and uh, has many benefits. For that, I'm not going to use this get work info by ID in here. Instead, when we uh, know the live data in database session, we will work with this work manager and uh, that live data. Also, there are a lot more functionalities, like if you are working with Firebase Job Dispatcher, you, know, you can easily migrate to work manager. All of these beside the compatibility that Work Manager is providing for you. You notice we didn't check for build version at any part of our code. Okay, I think that's enough about Work Manager. Usually at the end of every session we had a challenge, but because all the background tests were similar to each other, I'm not going to put any challenge in here. In the next session, we are going to learn networking in the Android, meaning that uh, how to connect to the internet and receive and pass data to the internet. We will work with uh, things like XML parser, Wally library, and also the very useful library Retrofit. See you in the next session.